Hello again, Asbury. I'm Jim Davis, Director of Global Outreach here at Asbury, and we are excited that you are back today. We asked the question last week, why do we go to the other side of the world to do missions when there's so much need right here in Tulsa? And there's a biblical answer for that. And so that's what we're trying to explore over these next couple of weeks. Uh, thank you for coming back. You at least found something interesting last week if you're back again, so I appreciate that. As I said last week, this is one of my favorite series to teach because it, it shows the theme of scripture of God's heart for the nations. And not that you can't pick that out here and there, but when you look at a whole series of stories together, you see God's heart for the nation. So that's where we're gonna pick up again today. If you remember, we divided scripture into three sections. Genesis 1 through 11, Genesis 12 through most of the rest of scripture, and then the book of Revelation. And if you remember, that's quite lopsided on the page count, but, but here's why we divided it that way. God created us in his image and intended us to be in perfect harmony with him. But we know that sin entered the world and, and broke that. So that's the story of Genesis 1 through 11. But then God has a plan to redeem us, but not just us, but the whole of the world, the nations. And so starting in Genesis 12 through the rest of scripture, uh, we see that plan of redemption. And then in Revelation, we see the, the completion of God's uh, creation back to like it was intended to be. So we looked last week at God's plan to fill the earth with his glory. We are made in his image, so therefore we're his image bearers. And our command was to fill the earth, to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So that spreads God's glory throughout the nations. We failed at that. And in fact, we failed so badly that as we saw last week in the story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, mankind wanted to build a tower to the heavens to make a name for themselves and not be scattered over the earth. So the total opposite of what God had intended. So now we get to pick up in the next chapter, chapter 12 of Genesis, where God sets his plan into motion. And that's with the call of Abram, later to be known as Abraham. And this is sort of viewed as the first missional call to take the gospel to the nations. So let's take a look at Genesis chapter 12. And let me read verses 1 through 4. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So God promises a blessing to Abram, but we also know that that blessing was not just for himself. It says, all the families on earth will be blessed through you. And what a cool thing. We are actually grafted into that as uh, followers of Jesus who've been grafted into God's family. And so this is our call today too. We are blessed in order for us to be a blessing to all nations. And so this is the first call that sets this story into motion. So what I wanna look at now is a number of verses that show this theme throughout scripture, that God has a heart for the nations. And it's not just one or two verses here or there. And it's throughout. And once you start recognizing this call and this heart for the nations, you see it in multiple places through scripture. So I want to look through just several types of uh, references to this, books of history, the Psalms, the major prophets, the minor prophets, just to sort of demonstrate a, a collection of these kinds of stories. So let's start taking a look at these. Um, and let's first look at the story of the Exodus out of Egypt in Exodus chapter 14. Uh, as you know, the Israelites had been enslaved for 400 years, and Moses led the people out. And, it, and I always thought of this as God's delivering his people out of the land of Egypt. And that's certainly a significant part. But let's read verse 14, chapter 14, verse 4. This is God speaking to Moses. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. Aha! God took his people out of Israel, out of, out of captivity, but there's a broader purpose as well, that 
the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. Ah, there's a missional component here. And we know that actually was effective because later when the spies go into the promised land in Joshua chapter two, and they met Rahab in Jericho, she says, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt. So it was a missional purpose and the mission was accomplished. All right, let's take a look at another story. The great story of David and Goliath from 1 Samuel chapter 17. The Philistines had wiped out many other nations and now here the Israelites face them and are cowering in fear. Uh, would the Israelites be next in this wipeout? But then we, we know shepherd boy David came forward willing to fight Goliath. And listen to this account from 1 Samuel 17. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and with spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the hosts of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the Lord battle is the Lord's, and he will give it into your hand. So there it is again. God has delivered the Israelites from the hands of the Philistines through David. Yet there's a broader purpose here, that the Lord's name may be known throughout the land. Pretty exciting, huh? Let's take a look at the dedication of the temple that Solomon had built from 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Here's verses 32 and 33. And this is uh, uh, Solomon praying to God at the dedication of the temple. Likewise, when a foreigner who is not of your people Israel comes from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when he comes and prays towards this house, hear from heaven your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls you in order that all the peoples of the earth may know that your name and fear you as do your people Israel and that they may know that this house that I have built is called by your name. If you know the history of the, of the temple, there's the court of the Gentiles that non-believers from Israel could come into and worship. And again, we know this accomplished God's purpose for the foreigners to come worship uh, the, the name of the Lord. Uh, the famous visitor, the Queen of Sheba, had come because she had heard of this temple and the Lord and wanted to come see what the worship was about. Let's look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the book of Daniel chapters three and four. If you remember, these three men would not uh, bow down to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar and worship him because of their belief in God. And when Nebuchadnezzar heard this, he ordered them to be thrown into the furnace and was brought before Nebuchadnezzar and said in verses three, 16 through 19, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Jumping down a few verses. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, he answered and said, But I see four men unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. So this is after Nebuchadnezzar had him thrown into the furnace that he ordered heated seven times hotter than normal. And in fact, the soldiers who threw these three in were killed from the heat. And now we see four men walking around. And so we take this, uh, the fourth person to be the pre-incarnate uh, image of Jesus. And so Nebuchadnezzar is astonished here and winds up issuing a decree to the world in uh, Daniel chapter 4. King Nebuchadnezzar to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you, 
It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has done for me. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion endures from generation to generation. So here's crazy King Nebuchadnezzar issuing a decree to the known world saying God's name is powerful. God has a heart for the nations. The Psalms are also full of this theme of the nations. I could have chosen from several, but here's Psalm 96, verses 1 through 3. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. The psalmists cry out to the nations. So let's take a look at some of the prophets. I mentioned both the major prophets and the minor prophets, so we'll take a look at one of each. Here's Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6, and this is God speaking through the prophet Isaiah. It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. So he's saying it's not just for Israel, it's so that the Gentiles will know the light of God as well. Habakkuk 2.14, the minor prophet. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So this is a prophecy. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of God. We know it's going to happen. How cool is that? So that's a survey of some Old Testament passages. Then we get to the New Testament and Jesus. Of course, Jesus is the, the long-awaited Messiah for the Israelites and, and the nation. But it's more than that. God uh, uses Jesus to teach others as well. In fact, Jesus uh, ministered to, to more than just Israel. He ministered to Samaritans. He ministered to Roman soldiers, both of whom were arch enemies of Israel, right? Uh, that Jesus focused not just on his own people, but the whole world. He wanted the nations to come. And he spoke in Matthew, chapters, uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed through the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. It will go to all nations before the end comes. Of course, we have the Great Commission, where Jesus says, go to all nations to make disciples and to baptize and to teach. Then in, at Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, we see the, the nations gathered in Jerusalem for the feast. And when the Holy Spirit came down on the disciples and they prophesied and told truths, every person heard the message in his own language. What a cool redemption of the story of the Tower of Babel that we started with today. Uh, God has redeemed the languages and the nations. And so think about all these people in town to Jerusalem. They all then took the gospel message back to wherever they lived. How amazing is that? God is accomplishing his purposes. Then we see the disciples. Uh, as you know, the disciples were scattered by fear of persecution and took the gospel all around the world. And of course, Paul was known as the missionary to the Gentiles who took the gospel message. So there we see that God is actively pursuing the nations. It's not just one or two times in scripture, but it's a, it's a theme throughout, and hopefully we've taken a look at that. And then we get to the conclusion. Uh, so, so section three of our three-part division is the book of Revelation. And we see a beautiful picture in Revelation 5, and then again in Revelation 7, of all the nations represented. Let me read Revelation 7, verses 9 through 10. This is John speaking of what he saw in his vision. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. Wow, what a beautiful picture and all the nations represented there. So, so what do we uh, take from today as we summarize this up? So we looked at God using Abram 
the Israelites, David, Solomon, Nebuchadnezzar, the psalmist, Isaiah, Habakkuk, the disciples, to accomplish his purpose of getting the gospel to the nations. He can and will use us as well. So, so what is my role? What is your role in this? So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to explore how Asbury has taken this seriously to help get the gospel to the nations, whether that's here in Tulsa or around the world. And as I mentioned before, we are part of this call to Abram in, it, in Genesis 12 because we have been grafted into the family of God as believers. I'm not Jewish, but I'm part of this same heritage. And so this call of, uh, of Abram still applies to me today. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look through scripture today. And I, I hope I've, I've pointed out something that maybe you haven't noticed before. Once you start reading this throughout scripture, you, you'll pick up on these in the future. So come back next week and we'll take a look at some of the strategies that we use to get the gospel to the world. We certainly want to do our part in doing so. So we'll, we'll think through some ways that we can engage the world. And then also the next week, we'll take a look at what Asbury is doing around the world specifically and how we take this seriously to get the gospel to where it's not. Uh, I always love to engage with people. So if you have questions or want to talk further, feel free to call the church office and ask for me and we'll, we'll explore some more. I think this is a great lesson and I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for being with me today and I wish you a great week and we'll see you next time.